There are many places on this planet that present threats to us humans. Really, anywhere you go on Earth, there will be something that can kill you, and one of these things are volcanoes. Hawaii, North America, the Philippines, and numerous other places around the world have at least some form of volcanic activity. These explosive molehills have been on Earth since the beginning of time, and they were especially present in the Mesozoic. Though dinosaurs did not go extinct due to volcanic activity, as previously believed, they still encountered a few regions of the world that were incredibly volatile. In fact, the reason why so many feathered dinosaurs have been found in the Yixian Formation in China is because the region had active volcanoes that buried the animals alive in volcanic ash. In the late Cretaceous, India was another one of these highly volcanic regions. This region of west-central India, better known as the Deccan Traps, was a semi-arid landscape but became extremely volatile by the end of the late Cretaceous. In this hostile environment appeared what may very well be the Deccan's apex predator. This was Rajasaurus, the King Lizard of India. This was an abelosaurid theropod and the largest predator that we know of from the Lamata Formation. But as we'll see, Rajasaurus was not the king of India's burning lakes of lava. The remains of this animal aren't much, but they can tell us a lot about what it is and what it's related to. The holotype, which is basically a fancy name for the first specimen ever unearthed, consists of a partial skull with a brain case included, several vertebrae, as well as pieces of the hip, legs, and tail. As you can see, not exactly much. However, the remains are diagnostic enough to name a new genus of theropod. Size estimates based on these fossils provide a length of 22 feet, or 6.6 .6 meters. The legs of Rajasaurus were also notably short, but they could still be tall enough to look a grown man in the eye. These short legs also hint at a bit of paleobiology, as it's believed that this animal would be an ambush predator, utilizing stealth and waiting for the right moment to attack their prey. As mentioned earlier, Rajasaurus is an abelisaurid theropod, specifically a member of the Majungasaurinae subfamily. This subfamily is named after Majungasaurus, the most complete member of the family from Madagascar. These animals differed from other abelisaurids mainly in their skull anatomy, as Majungasaurines had comparatively lighter and longer skulls than other abelisaurids like, say, Carnotaurus. It's possible that, like Majungasaurus, Rajasaurus would also have a small crest atop its skull that would likely serve some form of social purpose. When Rajasaurus was around, the subcontinent of India was a seasonal, semi-arid to tropical savanna ecosystem. Perhaps this land could be most comparable to modern-day savannas, such as ones in India or Kenya. Miles upon miles of seasonal, desert-like landscapes with a few sparse areas of forest to break up the monotony. Only when the wet season returns does the region begin to flourish with life once more. You'd likely see this region's wildlife most during this time of plenty, and oh boy, were there a lot of animals here. Janemies, the only turtle species found in the formation, thrived in the waterways. Large snakes such as Matsoya and Sanage would have eaten small animals such as Janemies, as well as the small mammal Avashishta. The largest animals in the region were sauropods, such as Titanosaurus, Janosaurus, and Isisaurus. There is also evidence of a Stegosaurid, a Ceratopsian, and an Ankylosaurid from the formation too, but not much has been found on these animals. Rajasaurus would have fed on these large herbivores, but wouldn't be the only predator in the region. Small Noosaurids, relatives of Abelosaurids, were present here too and likely fed on small animals while also staying away from the larger predators. Other carnivores in the area were Abelosaurids too. Rachiolosaurus, Indosuchus, Indosaurus, and Ornithomimoides. However, these animals are incredibly fragmentary and they may very well be examples of Rajasaurus itself. One or two may be their own genuses, but 
it's rather unlikely that this region was heavily populated with so many large predatory abelosaurids. However, every organism in this ecosystem would face what may very well be the darkest age of India's natural history. Around 66 million years ago, hundreds of thousands of years before the famous extinction of the dinosaurs, the Deccan traps began erupting. This would become the largest volcanic region in the world back then, and the effects of these volcanoes would be devastating on this once lush environment. Now, the dangers of a volcanic eruption are not just explosions, pyroclastic flow, and molten magma, but rather the things you can't see. Volcanoes often seep out toxic gases such as carbon dioxide and hydrogen sulfide, which would suffocate any animals that came too close. Clouds of volcanic ash would also be expelled from the earth and lacerate the lungs of animals who accidentally breathe it in. Life in India would be choked to death for thousands of years, resulting in the extinctions of numerous native fauna. This would likely include Rajasaurus too, because even though they were the top predator, that doesn't mean much when your own world can kill you. And that is also the end of the line for this video. I figured I'd dive into talking about something related to heat because it's currently summer right now and it's already toasty here. Seriously, it's, it's not bad in Kansas yet, but any heat over 80 degrees is still too much for me. <laughs> Don't forget to like and comment as this helps get the video out there and tells YouTube that these videos do not suck. Well, that's it for now. See you around.